Hello everyone, the second part of the video will be about prognosis and treatment options for desmoid tumors. Uh, if I tell the truth, we don't predict the prognosis of desmoid tumor very well because every patient is unique and case-by-case -case assess assessment is necessary for this kind of interesting tumors. Uh, and um, the specific uh, tumor board is also essential for this kind of tumors but I have to say that uh, in Turkey we don't have uh, uh, specific medical tumor boards uh, here. Of course we know that they have no metastatic potential but some kind of desmoid tumors must be treated aggressively according to their site. If you face the extra abdominal desmoid tumors, uh, we must be careful and aggressive uh, when we compare to abdominal desmoid tumor because we know uh, the recurrence rate from the previous literatures uh, for extra abdominal ones, uh, recurrence rate is reported up to 75 percentage, uh, which is more frequently than abdominal desmoid tumors, which is uh, almost uh, tw uh, 25 percentage. So we, we have to know that localization is very important uh, for therapy design. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Gar Gardner syndrome is very different. Uh, we must be very, very careful for this kind of patients. Uh, if the patient has uh, Gardner syndrome, uh, the recurrence rate is up to 90 percent, so uh, we must be very careful uh, and uh, sometimes complex therapy is necessary if the patient has uh, Gardner syndrome. And I would like to talk about uh, a little bit uh, treatment options for desmoid tumor. Uh, I can group them into four categories, uh, watchful waiting, systemic therapies, uh, surgery and ablations. Uh, I would like to give a specific video for ablations, so I would like to start watchful waiting first. Uh, watchful waiting uh, is not a new strategy for tumors, but uh, for desmoid tumors, watchful waiting is useful because we know that up to uh, 20 to 30 uh, percentage of patient uh, will be stable in time so we can monitor them by using MRI machine. We, we can follow up the size of the tumor and uh, the shape of the tumor uh, so we can decide that the tumor is active or tumor is stable uh, or growing so uh, we can monitor and we decide uh, what to do in the next step. For systemic therapy, uh, some kind of uh, chemotherapeutic drugs such as uh, doxorubicin or metatrexate uh, is useful and available for desmoid tumors. On the other hand, new targeted therapies, uh, new targeted drugs uh, such as immunotherapies is also useful for desmoid tumors. So we can try uh, the drugs uh, and they are available uh, in the market. Uh, in the past, we used uh, hormonal therapies uh, and non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory uh, therapies, but today uh, this kind of new drugs is uh, more and more available uh, for desmoid tumors. Uh, for surgery, the main aim is to remove uh, tumor completely, uh, but as I mentioned before, it's not possible for all locations. For example, if the patient uh, has a desmoid tumor, uh, which is located uh, in very critical location, uh, for example, very near to vessels or very near to nerves, uh, the complete removal will be impossible. So that's why some authors uh, may offer radiotherapy after surgery uh, to, uh, to destroy uh, the rest of the tumor. 
Uh, the next part of the video will be about uh, ablations. Uh, until next time, see you, bye bye.